It is extremely bright and harsh right now. It's a horrible time to be filming. But um, we're out here at the pasture taking care of the animals. It's hot. Florida heat's coming. Ugh. But look at how tall these have gotten. Oh my goodness. They're, they're taller than me now. Ah! And we only got probably about three foot left of them to clear before they're actually reaching over the top of the arched trellis. But uh, green beans and everything are doing really good. But I wanted to take a quick second and uh, we wanted to welcome all of the new subscribers that came flooding in over the last couple days. Thank you so much for coming and joining us. Yeah. <laughs> and um, he's been working a lot of hours with everything going on, especially with us getting prepared to start building the house. But just so you guys can kind of meet us, I'm Tiffany. This is my husband, Davis. Um, Normally there's a little one named Leon, but he's having a fun slumber party weekend with his grandma. But um, that is our family, and um, I'm going to leave a, a card, I think it would be over here. Um, if you guys want to get to know us more and you haven't yet found it, we have a playlist that you can follow our journey from day one and get to know us, what we're doing, and uh, where we're going in life right now. But um, I'm going to give you guys a quick tour of our garden and uh then uh we're gonna have a cookout today yeah yeah <sighs> gonna start over here at the far right the strawberry and asparagus bed are doing wonderfully as you can see all of them popped up i'm really happy with them i was a little worried because we had planted half of them and then we didn't plant the other half until a week later but they're doing great Strawberries are doing great. We lost a few. As you can see, they are doing wonderfully. See, here's a weed, pull that up. But they are doing wonderfully. We plucked all the blossoms off of them. We got a replacement of uh, 10 strawberry bare root plants to replace the ones that we lost from MI Gardener. And um, they're all doing great. We haven't lost a single one of those. In fact, let me see. I planted those about a week ago. And here is the new growth coming in on those. But I am really excited for these strawberries. They're starting to get really full and big, like this one in particular. Look at how big this one has gotten, just to kind of do a size comparison. I think this is our healthiest one out of the batch. It's already sending off a runner. Now, if you've never grown strawberries before, certain varieties of strawberries will send off runners and basically they're sending off a little baby strawberry plant. And this will send off roots eventually. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let it fill in the gaps in between the strawberries and expand that row. And then any ones that come in past there, I'm gonna snip them, plant them, root them, and then have new strawberry plants to start. Oh, look at the baby asparagus coming in. Look at that little baby asparagus. So we will not be able to harvest this our first year with the asparagus plants, so we're letting them establish themselves right now. But uh, next year, we'll be able to start harvesting our asparagus because you want to, like I said, you want to let the plants establish. But look at our squash plants. I showed you a little bit ago at the beginning of this video, but we're just gonna kind of go down the row. So down here at this end, um, there's probably can't see them underneath. There's very tiny little, we were gifted some spaghetti squash um, starts from a friend. So there's a couple spaghetti squash. Then we have some crookneck early golden. Um, it's an heirloom summer squash that we got from Baker Creek. Started these all, majority of these were all started from seed. Um, I did not buy any transplant this year. This is actually my first year, of course, aside from the strawberries and the asparagus, this is my first year not buying any transplants from the store, and I'm really proud of how well this has all come out. So we've got the early golden summer squash, then we've got an Italian variety of squash right here, and it's really pretty. It's the Cocosella di Napoli squash. 
Then we've got a Japanese variety of cucumber. Then next to it, you'll see these uh, few garden. You might recognize the little flecks on the leaves. This is a Moon and Stars watermelon. We are excited to try growing those this year. It is doing really well. Then we've got, let's see, this variety over here. This is Seminole Pumpkin, followed by, I know they all look the same, but I've got labels on them. So we've got Seminole Pumpkin. Then we've also got uh, New England Sugar Pie Pumpkin. And then we've got Lufa Gourds. I'm really excited to grow Lufa. They're doing wonderfully. It's really kind of cool to see the differences between the plants the different types of squash plants. It's so dark over here, the sun is so harsh. But I mean, look at how big this leaf is. It's huge. And I think I saw some blossoms starting to come in. Look at these squash blossoms. Look at that squash blossom. So hopefully here soon, we'll start to see some stuff coming in. Um, Mixed in with the strawberries, I planted some marigolds um, to kind of hopefully deter the rabbits that live out here. So far we haven't had any stress from the rabbits, that's good, but we're going to take the precautious side. Um, now down here we've got four different varieties of green beans. Uh, I need to re-sow some of these down here. Um, I've got, right here is a purple potted green bean. And um, these were seeds that we had saved previously and they're a few years old, so the germination rate was going to be a little shoddy. But we got those, then we've got, you can't go wrong with uh, Blue Lake pole beans. Blue Lake are really good. Green beans, um, very popular variety. Then on this side, we've got, this is a Kentucky Wonder, or Kentucky Pole, that's what it is, Kentucky Pole bean. And then, Thank you, King Daddy. That's our silky rooster. And uh, then on this side, we've got 1,500-year-old cave bean from Baker Creek. And I'm excited to try that out. They are just, they're very vigorous right now, really starting to take over. They're finally reaching that height where they can start climbing the trellis. As you can see, I mean, look at all of them. Oopsies, put a lot of focus. Just look at them. Then Davis requested that I plant some sugar peas. Sugar peas! Drop them! Okay! They're sweet peas. I guess that would technically be. They're not sugar peas, but there's tiny little sweet peas. Never grown sweet peas before, so this is going to be a fun little trial. Um, we have a single single butternut squash growing right here. It's coming in. It struggled at first, but it's doing a lot better now and it's just catching up. But eventually all of this will grow and climb over our cattle panel trellis. That's going to be gorgeous and so romantic. So next rows we've got, we've got two 24 foot long rows of tomatoes and um, planted a lot of varieties this year testing the waters, trying out new varieties. So I'm gonna go down here to the end and show you guys all the different varieties, which ones are doing good. Oh, something else. <clears throat> down here, these are Aunt Molly's ground cherries and they've been doing really well. Um, we actually had four of them, so I planted two at the end of the trellis down here. So we've got four ground cherries. Starting here on the left, we've got Roma tomatoes. Then we've got chocolate pear tomatoes. Now all of these, almost all of these tomatoes came from Baker Creek Seed. These are yellow pear tomatoes. Then we've got Cherokee purple. Can't go wrong with Cherokee purple. Then we've got a Brad's Atomic grape. Then we've got a red Rosso Sicilian tomato. Striped Roman tomato. Blue Beauty tomato. Paul Robeson tomato. Amish paste. And then of course we finish off with the ground cherry. Now, as you can see, all these tomatoes are actually doing really well. The only ones that are struggling are the Amish paste. I mean, you see all of this growth on all the other 
tomatoes and then we get to the Amish paste and they're just, they're so small. So they are struggling for some reason. Um, and it's not for the lack of soil. The soil is very, very rich, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how they do. Hopefully they'll start to catch up. The rainy season's coming in. They're gonna get nice and watered regularly out here. I'm, we do a wood chip gardening, so I try not to water very often. It helps. Um, I'm less likely to have weeds grow in when the top of the ground is not watered. So, and and we have a pretty good. It's pretty good moisture under the under, in the ground here. So, the, the plants are able to draw up from that. So our last row for now, because this is going to expand all the way to that end, we've got cabbage now. This is our row of cabbage. This is an all-season cabbage that we are growing and it's kind of an experiment to see if we can grow cabbage in the late spring early summer um, it does say that our area this is the time to grow to plant them from seed so we'll see then we've got um, something that i'm doing it worked in my last garden is i'm inter sowing in the cabbage before the cabbage comes in onions so on the let me see here so you guys can see it now they're gonna to start to come in fully. On the left side, we've got bunching onions that I've transplanted from my old garden. And then on the right side here, you can see I've got bulbing onions. And these are white Ebenezer onions. I got them as the uh, sets. The dormant bulbs is how I got them. I did not get them with the, the green tops, which I think are the starts. I think that's what they are. I always get that mixed up. But basically the whole idea behind this is that uh, any any of the uh, alum family, which I like chives, garlic, um, and I don't know if onions are technically part of that family, but basically they put off a scent that a lot of the pests do not like the smell of, and so it kind of deters them from coming. And as you can see, like I said, there's, there's the new leaves, there's no damage. So hopefully that works. I will, uh, oopsies, hopefully that works. I will keep you guys posted. So we had moved the horses and cows out onto this paddock and they're doing an awesome job of working it down um, they've still got a lot of forage in here so we're letting them run an additional week just to eat that down evenly give the rest of the pasture some more time to rest get nice and full and thick especially after i um, mowed it but uh it's doing beautifully since i mowed it i'll show you guys that in a second but i thought y'all might want an update on a certain mama annabelle so annabelle's earliest expected due date came and went and she's no different are you mama hi they're precious so she's still not showing any signs of labor so we're just letting her run the pasture and graze letting her improve her conditioning with this uh fresh grass but uh i'll let you guys look at her you can't normally you could look at pins but because she had lost weight Lexi had caused her to lose a lot of weight. You can't use this right now because that's just from her putting weight on still. But she's looking a lot better than she was. Hi, dear mamas. Um, her udders, as you can see, oh, it's really, really, really dark. Her udders are still not full. She's still got a lot of room for expansion. They are starting to feel a little full, but they're still they're very baggy it's not very you see she's got all this excess skin that is not bagging up quite yet but you have any idea when you're gonna have this baby oh mamas people are eager to see your baby you gonna have a heifer calf you gonna have a little girl oh chin scratches that's my good mamas Yes, my good mamas. I give you scratches on the back of the ear. Oh, does that feel good? Good girl. That's a good girl, Annabelle. Something big happened this past week, and you guys might notice it. Something's missing. Our camper sold. Look at how much more room we have. It's amazing how much room that camper took up. There's just so much more space now. I got the milking stanchion in place in the shade for when Annabelle calves, so I'm not sitting in the sun. And now I can come in here and mow this down, let the grass grow back in. 
Mama goats are doing wonderfully. They are just munching away on their hay. <laughs> Rhyme. Hi, Mocha. You enjoying that? Hi, Maple. So they are happy. And Saffron just loves using the tray as his place. Um, if you guys have any suggestions, we're running into a problem with this hay feeder with the tray. We, put, we like to have the tray so that it catches the hay. So, because goats are very picky about their food and once it touches the ground, they will not touch it. But as you can see, we have a problem with that. Saffron helps himself up into it. So, we're tr but the problem is because they have horns, we can't put bars so that they can feed, stick their heads in and eat the hay. So, because they'll get stuck. So if anyone has any suggestions on what we could do so that they could eat and not get stuck, but not get up in there, please leave a comment down below because we need a we need help send help this is an empty roost all the spring chicks have hatched and there are no more and, uh, if you guys tuned into the live stream you got to see some of them but they have all gone to their new homes and people are loving their new silky chicks hi babies and we've got the new young silkies for our reading flock, hi King Daddy. And they are just, they're doing great. They're all doing great. Our new Americanas are doing excellent too. They're uh, getting closer to being big enough to move into the poultry net with the main flock and start running on pasture. And Toshiba, that's a good girl. Is that a feather baby? Is that a feather baby? No, no, Shiva. So, you guys voted. We asked, you voted, and we had a lot of names. There was, for a time, there was a real battle between um, Sage, Magnolia, and Clementine, and for a long while there, Sage was looking like it was going to win, but... Very close battle. <laughs> so, what name, what name won? Magnolia! Her name is Magnolia. Little Magnolia. Which I think is a perfect fit, considering we have wild magnolias growing on the property. It would so. really make sense. Yeah. But sage? We don't have any sages out on our property. Well, we can, so you can always grow sage. I am planning on growing sage, but I think it Meg... Make any sense. But it, it, it fits our farm and homestead perfectly because of all the wild magnolias that are already growing on the property. There's mm -hmm. a lot of huge magnolia trees yeah. around the property. She's already kind of shown herself to be a little troublemaker, so she is our wild magnolia. So thank you guys so much. and. Uh, Oh, actually, I haven't checked. What? We've been, uh, as I said earlier, I wanted to welcome all of the amazing new subscribers that have joined. Let's see. Ah! Yeah, 4,000 subscribers. Broke, yep, just broke 4,000 subscribers. So this over the past couple days, we've had a surge of over 2,500 new subscribers. So we just want to give you guys a big, huge thank you and welcome. welcome. <laughs> so, um... So yeah, so if that is her name, Magnolia. We think it's a good fit. Yep, perfect. So perfect hopefully fit. she will prove to be a good little guardian goose and she stays sweet and gentle. And uh, we'll document her her journey. She's already very sweet enough. Mm-hmm, very cuddly. So. Very calm, mm -hmm. so far. <laughs> so far. <laughs> All right. She agrees. Thank you. Shiva, is that a feather baby? Good girl. Hey. <laughs> what are you doing? Hey. 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 <laughs> All right, watch the cat, Leon. So 
So if you recall, whenever we had our silkies breeding and we were hatching um, our silky chicks, we had built a DIY chick brooder. Well, whenever we got our 26 meat Cornish cross chicks, now these are, um, we are raising them um, with everything going on, we wanted to go ahead and jump in and try our hand at raising our own meat chickens. Um, and this kind of go hand, goes hand in hand with what we are doing on our homestead, with where, where we want to get closer to our food, wanting to know where our food's coming from, wanting to know that it was raised humanely, and uh, help us save money in trying to get closer to having organic, uh, an organic diet. So um, obviously the 26 chicks would not have fit in our little tiny brood box. So um, I found someone was selling a bunch of fruit bins. And uh, so I got a fruit bin and don't mind the mess, I'm in the process of cleaning my office, but this is the what they were in. And now we've got them in this. So much more room for them to walk around, stretch their legs. Very sweet baby, huh baby girl? Oh. Just, just crash it over everything. But she is doing good. And so far we are doing pretty good with our 26 chicken nuggets. They are happy as can be. I'm going to start getting work to work on building their chicken tractor to get them out on the pasture and uh, free ranging in a sense. Keep them exercise so that they, their legs do better, hopefully. We'll see. But uh, excited to see how this goes. And also, if anyone's interested, um, I thought it would be really cool to take this uh, experience of raising these guys and do kind of a, um, a follow through on it. Do like a Meat Chickens 101, uh, tracking the costs, including building the chicken tractor, the feed, all of that and uh, using that to estimate how much it costs. Now, um, something that I definitely want to do is I want to try and do it in a way that is more easily uh, obtainable to people because oftentimes when I see um, someone raising pasture uh, meat chickens on organic diets, they often have to order the feed. So I want to try and do that in a more accessible way. So we're likely going to try to get our feed for them through tractor supply. I know that that is a very um, easily accessible um, uh, store that a lot of people can get to and buy feed through and they do sell organic chicken feed So we're gonna try and see how it does and then like I said, I'll, I'll document a video from Here on out and uh, I'll release that video later on whenever we get to the end and I have uh, all the numbers together for you guys